Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzi and welcome to another episode of the Cat Skull Academy, the series that aims to teach you everything you need to know to get the best start possible in EVE Echoes. In today's video we're continuing our look at the Tech 6 Heavy Cruisers by having a look at the Galente Federation's Thorax. Now I've mentioned in my videos talking about which of the Heavy Cruisers you should aim for that the Thorax can be a bit of a problematic one in just off the simple account that there's no Tech 5 ship really that uses railguns other than, well, I suppose the Thorax prototype. So you might have gone for that, you might have trained railgun skills and you might already have a basic understanding of this hull. Now all that said though, it doesn't make this any less of a powerful ship. It is still a very powerful ship, just it has a bit more of sort of a training barrier to get into because you probably haven't flown a railgun ship before this. None of the trainer ships that you've been offered um, have used railguns. So we're going to have a look at the Thorax, talk about how to fit this, how it works, showcase it in action, and explain to you why you should probably be flying this if you are a new railgun pilot. Now, if you do enjoy this video, please let me know by hitting a like on it, sub to the channel for all things Ebeckos, ding the notification bell to never miss a video, and if you do have questions at the end of this video, please comment in the comment section down below, or join my Discord and ask there. There's a bunch of very friendly folk who are more than happy to help with any problems you may have. And remember, commenting on my videos and being active in the public section of my Discord gives you chances to win a month of Combo Omega every week. Every week, I give three people a month of Combo Omega. A mega each. You've got to be in it to win it, folks. That said and done, though, before we jump in, if you want to help support this channel and keep me doing what I do, head across to my Patreon page where you can pledge to support there and check out my Redbubble merchandise store. That said and done, let's jump right in to talking about the Galente Federation Thorax. First of all then, let's have a look at the Thorax's ship stats and attributes. So we're going to need to go into the Galente Federation ship tree to the cruiser branch. And you'll see that the cruiser branch starts here with the various vexes and there is a Thorax prototype. Then we have the main Thorax at tech level 6. This is the one we're going to be focusing on for today's video. And I've got to be honest, the Thorax doesn't really do it for me visually. I find this ship not overly great to look at, but it is still very powerful. Let's have a look at its stats. So we've got one drone launching tube. This gives us small or medium drones. We can pretty much ignore this for the most part. It's not exactly important to us in regards to this video. We then have four high slots, which are for your weapons, two mid slots for your sub weapons, which will be things like Nosferatu's, Stasis Webifiers, that kind of thing, and a whopping five low slots. Low slots are what give us the abilities to tank incoming damage with things like repairers um, and armor hardeners. We can also add in weapon upgrade modules like heat sinks or magnetic field stabilizers. And we can even put in propulsion modifiers like afterburners and micro warp drives. We then have two of each of the rig types, two combat rigs and two engineering rigs, which give us a little bit of versatility to help cover up some of the weaknesses with this ship or to lean heavily into its strengths. Cargo hold is pretty sizable as well, 930 cubic meters. Then we have a defense of 13,811, and the vast majority of that is in structure and armor. Now you'll see the Glente ships don't have very good shield at all. They've got pretty solid armor, but they've also got a lot of structure in case that armor tank fails. We then have a power grid here, 692 megawatts. This is pretty sizable. It's good enough for what we need um, without room really for much in the way of oversizing, but that's to be expected. Capacitors, 2,301 gigajoules and a max capacitor recharge rate of 11.55. That means the capacitor bank is middling. It's not a bad sized bank and it recharges fairly quickly too. It's not as bad as some of the others. It's not as good as some of the others. The thorax is pretty much firmly in the middle when it comes to its capacitors. Its signature radius though, it is quite large, 110.3 meters. You're gonna be fairly quick to lock onto um, and you're not very difficult to miss which is uh, not very difficult to hit, which is kind of a point here with the Galente ships. You're also fairly slow, 258 meters per second, but the mass and inertia, interestingly enough, these give you a surprisingly good agility rating. The Thorax is a surprisingly nimble ship. It's just slow. 
Now, this means that over short distances, if you're going from a couple of ships that are in brawling range, you can very quickly move between those ships. However, for longer range stuff, the thorax does come apart a little bit. It's not particularly good at kiting, but that's fine. Of the two railgun heavy cruisers, the thorax is probably the one that has the better bonuses when it comes to brawling using snub-nosed railguns. It's not to say that the mower can't, but the thorax is probably the better of the two in just regards to how well it applies its damage. Damage. If we have a look at the trait description then, first of all, armor operation. If you're training the armor operation skill for each level in basic armor operation that you have up to a maximum of basic 5, you'll get an additional 5% armor. That's on top of the basic armor we've already seen of 3980, so can call that basically 4000 in total. If you have that trained all the way to level 5, armor operation 5, you're then going to have 25% additional armor, taking you up to nearly 5000 hit points in your armor tank. That's pretty solid. We then have Cruiser Command bonus. Every level you have in Cruiser Command increases the medium railgun damage by 5%, so 25% at full training, and a 7.5% increase to medium railgun tracking speed. This is 37.5 at full training. This is why the thorax becomes pretty good at brawling, because up close and personal, you have high angular velocity. This means that targets are moving across you quite quickly, and it can be hard for them to track. Even medium snub-nosed railguns could theoretically struggle against very small and fast-moving foes, so the thorax has a bonus there that clearly favours those uh, snub-nosed railguns to help you apply that damage to your targets. So let's have a look at fitting this then. This fit is aimed at tech level 6 and tech level 7 ratting. Whether you're doing that in high sec using news encounters, or whether you're in low sec doing cosmic anomalies, this will comfortably do the tech 7 uh, high sec encounters, and it will do tech level 6 or 7 small and medium anomalies. It does struggle a little bit in the larges, but that's fine. You should be able to be just okay with small and medium anomalies, and they're a good source of isk for your current tech level. Now, the thorax fit here as well is about 35 million on the market at the time of me making this. That sounds like a lot, but you can earn that back very quickly using this ship, and that's based on me using meta level 6 modules. If you only have Mark 5 modules, or even the meta 5 uh, modules, which are the ones with the green icon on them, then you'll still do just fine. You should aim to be improving the quality of your fitting over time, um, but if you have to start with Mark 5 gear, you'll still be more than comfortable doing the tech level level 6 stuff, and you should be capable of the tech level 7 stuff. Anyway, because the thorax has bonuses to sort of brawling stuff, that's what we're going for, an up close and personal punch him in the face Captain Benzie special brawler fit using medium snub-nosed railguns. Now the DPS from these is monstrous at 113 DPS each, um, however that is let down by an incredibly short optimal range, 4.14 kilometers, and an accuracy fall off of only 5.52. This means you are fully effective at about 4 kilometers. you're down to half effectiveness by the time you hit 10 kilometers, and you're basically ineffective at 15 kilometers, so you do really need to maintain that distance. And that's why the Galente ships have the agility that they do. They're not great at sprinting, but in, uh, great at sort of long distances, but they are very good at burst speed over short distances to get them from A to B. Now, because of this, we need a propulsion module. I've gone for a medium afterburner here because I don't want to be affecting my capacitor too much, um, and the speed tanking is quite nice. It allows us to stay close to our targets and just punch them with those snub-nosed railguns. This is just for moving between A and B um, and making sure you keep in range with those snub-nosed railguns. Then, because this is an armor tank ship, we saw those bonuses there to its armor size. I've gone for two medium armor repairers and one adaptive armor hardener. Now the armor hardener increases your armor resistances, reducing the amount of damage you take, whereas the armor repairers, of course, allow you to repair any damage that you do take. Now you may have a yellow uh, armor hardener, a reactive armor hardener, rather than a red one. That will actually work really well if you're in Blood Raider, Sansha, or Serpentis anomalies, because they are only doing two types of damage. If you're in Guristus or you're in Angel anomalies, I do strongly recommend the red adaptive armor hardener, because it just, it deals with the multiple types of damage coming in much better than the reactive would. Reactives get confused, there's more than two types of damage, basically. For the mid slots, because we're going to be up close and personal, I've gone for two medium energy Nosferatus. We can drain our enemy's uh, capacitor to keep ours topped 
up. Now, again, it doesn't matter that these are Imperial Navy. You could just go for up here, which are the Meta 5, or even just a Mark 5 would do quite nicely um, to keep you going for the time being. Optimal range is 10.58. We're going to be well within that optimal range and thus draining their capacitor at all times. Remember, you can never flatten an NPC's capacitor, but you can still use them to help top your own up. Finally then, I have a drone here. I've gone for a Mark, a Mark V Hammerhead, just because it's cheap and Hammerhead fits the Galente theme. But ultimately, whatever drone you have available will be more than good enough, even if it's just a small drone. Now, for the rigs. For the combat rigs, I've gone for a collision accelerator and a burst aerator, activation time adjustment, and damage bonus. This is the straight up DPS setup. By increasing the amount of damage and reducing the amount of time between shots, you're attacking both ends of that calculation to deal as much damage as you can. One collision, one burst is the best way to go. Um, if you can only go for two collision or two, two burst, it's not a huge drop, um, but aim for a collision and a burst. In the engineering rigs, I've gone for a semiconductor memory cell and a capacitor control circuit. That just helps with the fact that we're only at basic level 5 for our engineering skills, and it helps maintain the ship's capacitor stability. It's not particularly stable, as you can see, it is on the lower end of stability, but stable is stable, you know, and ultimately, you'll find we aren't running everything all the time anyway, as we'll showcase in the combat demonstration in just a moment. This makes for a very cheap fit that is powerful, it's very fast at ratting, it's going to kill stuff nice and quickly, and it's going to be close enough for you to loot. So let's showcase it in action. This is Mine Defense Advanced, a Tech 6 Kaldari uh, news encounter. And you can see that the Thorax is having no problems with this at all. We're in wave 3, the final wave of this encounter. I'm still at 100% armor, and I'm still sitting around about 55-60% to on the capacitor as well. No difficulty whatsoever. Now, when a new wave spawns, I tend to go after, in this case, either the biggest target or any of the ones that are logistics vessels. If you can see that sort of blue line coming off a ship in the background, that means it's repairing a friendly ship, and that makes it a fairly high priority target for us to take out. You'll notice I wait until I'm nice and close to the mower before starting to fire on it because I don't really want to be wasting capacitor on shots that aren't going to do anything. I've activated the magnetic field stabilizer there in the low slots just to help dish out a little bit more damage um, and punch through things. Remember, the faster you clear anomalies, the quicker you can move on to the next one and therefore the more the more isk you can earn. So dealing, the amount, dealing a higher amount of damage does certainly help. You need to be able to survive. Once you can survive comfortably, DPS becomes your next important stat. And you'll see that with those snub-nosed railguns, every time they fire, it's like a shotgun blast taking strips out of that mower. It's down to half of its hull remaining, going down very quickly. And you can see that from my side of things in regards to damage, um, the one... Armor, uh, armor Repairer is more than enough to keep me topped up currently. Um, you may find that if you go into Tech 7 stuff that the Second Armor Hardener does become more useful. Uh, second Armor Repairer does become more useful, but for the time being, we're having no troubles at all. And speaking of no trouble, you can see we're now going after a destroyer. I wanted to prove that even without Webifiers, these destroyers go down really, really quickly. And indeed, there we are, we're in loot range because we're so close with those snub nosed, we can just grab everything and loot. And here we are against a Manticore, that's a stealth bomber. Small, fast moving frigate. And as we go at it with the, uh, the thorax here, you can see those snub nosed have no trouble at all hitting. We've got a couple of uh, like penetrates in there and down it goes. Same here for the Corax. Again, it's a destroyer, quite a small ship. I'm not going to say a fast one. Coraxes aren't fast. But again, no trouble here. We're dealing a decent amount of damage. A couple of glancing off hits and things like that, but strong hits as well. Down it goes. And we're on to the Caracal. You can see how quickly we are chewing through ships. You have to be fairly active and watching your phone for this because, well, obviously you've got to maintain essentially a range between 5 and 15 kilometers. You ideally want to be at that 15 kilometer, at that 5 kilometer range, um, but you definitely want to be within 15 kilometers. So it does take a little bit more sort of input from the player to maintain that range, but it also rewards you because you're close enough to be able to loot and being close means means you have higher damage than you would do if you were at range because obviously ranged weapons have lower DPS for the most part. That additional loot, especially if you've got skills in things like reprocessing, rig manufacture, and maybe some other industry skills, 
really can help supplement your income as well. So it, it, if you're finding that you know you're having to make effort to loot and you don't have any industrial skills, don't stress it. Really don't stress it. Looting isn't important, but it can be a nice side bit of income if you've just got a bit of you know, if you have those skills um, because you can then do stuff with that loot. Obviously, as well, if you're fighting enemies that are using loot like you um, and you're trying to upgrade, for instance, if you're doing a Tech 7 anomaly and you're looking to get, say, Mark 7 railguns, then looting those will be really useful as well because they'll be an upgrade over your Mark 5s and save you having to go to the market to buy them. Either way, though, um, it's entirely up to you how you deal with that. You can see the Thorax has just had no difficulties at all clearing this anomaly. That last mower goes down, anomaly clear, no stress at all. Still way above the 50% on the capacitor, still sitting at 100% armor as we head back to station to drop things off. Obviously, you'd move into your next anomaly as well and just continue making ISK that way. But hey, let me know your thoughts and opinions, folks. Are you flying a Thorax? If so, how are you finding it? Hopefully you've enjoyed this video, hopefully you found it useful, give you some insight and maybe inspiration to try flying a thorax if you've got railgun skills and fancy giving this one a go. Otherwise folks, thank you for watching right the way through to the end, happy sailing and see you in New Eden!